Good evening, welcome back. We're gonna see ourselves the second game between Vu and Relax. You're doing fine, and um, I think uh, that was probably one of the biggest throws we've ever seen in game number one. So yeah, that happened. <laughs> Vu was probably face uh, face palming themselves real hard. They needed a five minute break just to face palm or remove their hands from their face because they were stuck there. I don't know, but it was like, no, it shouldn't have happened. And I think everybody can agree with that. We're going to see ourselves if Vool can force out a third game. They are now one game behind. Relax, you're doing fine. Are indeed doing fine. They're looking to make it into a 2-0. And uh, earlier today I did say that we're going to hope to see a second best of three tonight. Uh, that's no longer going to happen because that game has already kicked off. So if you rather want to watch 4FC versus Courage, that is being cast by Dota Talk TV. So you can check it out there if you want to. We are going to see if, um, if we're going to have either a counter throw or if people actually are not going to throw this game and we're actually going to have ourselves a... I don't know... a solid winner or something? Well, we had a solid winner. Relax, it wins solidly after full through. But uh, yeah, we are inside the draft, so we're going to check ourselves out what these two teams have in store for us. As uh, Yeah, so far it doesn't really look that much special and different from previous game. Previous game we had Slark and Nyx banned out by Relax. We had Doom and Visage ban banned out by Fool. Let's see if they're gonna stick to their guns and do the same thing here. Uh, it's not entirely the same, actually. Mm -hmm. Venomancer banned out here by Vool instead. And of course we did have a Veno in previous game and it was on the side of Relax, so... Don't wanna have to deal with that anymore. Relax is banning out the same heroes though. No Slark, no Nyx Assassin. And the Visage, therefore, banned up by Fool themselves. It was like they banned out the Visage previous time. So they chose not to ban it and rather pick it up instead. So we'll see how they do with uh, with that Visage. A strong support. Uh, but the thing is, lately, we do not have... Um, like, th there's not heroes anymore that have... Like, a perma ban status. So... Ten seconds remaining. You know, Visage is strong, but it's not like, oh my god, yes, we got Visage, and now we're gonna win. No, it's it's strong support, nothing else to be said about it. We don't know yet how it go how it is gonna work out Reserved. for uh, Vool Assassins, as Relax is gonna think about their next pick. Previous game, they were the ones to basically burn through all of their bonus time before the second banning phase, and and I'm hoping for them that they're not having to do that again. Uh, that they can actually uh, just pick up heroes that they just r really want to have. They pick up two heroes. Uh, nice. Uh, we, of course, saw Mirana, previous game, played mid. Might be seeing the same thing here again. They pick up the Clockwork as well, which um, is going to be assumed as an offlaner for uh, Shackle. And to be honest, I did like the Wind Ranger for him, though he, he really can make those Shackles work for him. Of course, Clockwork is a very suitable hero for him as well. Uh, just very a uh, high potential to be very aggressive and to get hook shots going Ten and make the plays, remaining. and he can definitely do that on the clockwork as well. Five seconds remaining. But I don't know. I like the Wind Ranger a lot. I did indeed. We'll see how he uh, how he can handle this one though. As Vool Assassins is now thinking thinking uh, into their bonus time as well, ticking into their bonus time or thinking into their bonus time. Kind of turns into a weird word if you mix them up. But it's a oh, it's a Templar Assassin, which is uh, an interesting pick this early on. Uh, we did see it banned in the previous game in the second banning phase. But if you pick up a Templar Assassin this early, you give Relax all the time in the world seconds, to think about which kind of counter they want to go against it. Now there's a couple, of course. You can still ban out too if you want. But that also means that you're gonna leave everything else in the pool for Relax to pick up if you're just gonna ban out for mids. But Templar Assassin is actually, or used to, if it still is, uh, Wagamama's signature hero. He used to play that all the time. And uh, before she actually came out, he was already the one uh, getting excited over her. I think the most of all the people that have heard about her talk. So, yeah, he is uh, He's going to play the Templar Assassin. It will be interesting to watch. And there is one of the counters towards Templar Assassin removed. It is the Viper. We also saw the Viper ban in the previous game, by the way. As, uh... It is relaxed that will decide what they want to ban next. Now, for full assassins, they still need a core, secondary support, and an offlaner. Easiest one to ban out for right now is the offlaner. Because there's just, like, there's a couple of strong ones, obviously, but there's, uh, like, for example, ban out the Timbersaw. I would say ban that one, that one out. It's just a strong offlaner that is annoying to deal with. They did deal with it pretty well, though, previous game. 
But that would be uh, that would be a smart ban in my eyes. We also see a Bane remove from Vool Assassins. They don't want to pick him up themselves, and they do know that the Marana Bane combination, of course, still is very strong. Enchantress is there a support that Relax removes? Personally, I'm not that big of a fan of an Enchantress combined up with a Visage purely because you kind of lack disable then, and they I mean you have a lot of slow, which is great, but you need to get a disable, especially. Uh, with the Marana there, I think this able is kind of needed. Luna is getting banned out instead Radiant of uh, an offlaner though, so they are not taking my advice. I mean, they're the professional players for a reason. And Crystal Maiden picked up by Relax. I like that one a lot. Frostbite can take off the refraction a bit as well. You have a disable, which is uh, possible to set up for an, an, an ice arrow. Not an ice arrow, just a normal arrow. From Marana, uh, you, yeah, you can you can set up an arrow with the frostbite, so that's pretty decent as well. And you can set up some cogs with the clock for the clockwork if you wish. Uh, it's it's just a well-rounded support hero with slows with a disable. Yes, you can still cast during the um, frostbite, but that's it. Five seconds. Cannot remaining. move. Cannot right-click, which is something a Templar assassin really likes to do. Reserve time. Vool Assassins, ticking to the reserve time. We'll take a look and see uh, what other support they think about for together with that visage. Sand King, oh I like that one, we've seen it like if you if you watch this stream a lot like in the past a couple of months ago we, we I casted a lot of Asian Dota, I don't know why anymore but um, or which tournament it was, but there was a lot of Sand King Visage combinations roaming around and it's a good combination because normally the thing that Sand King, the thing that is working against Sand King as a support is that his Burrow Strike at level 1 is just such a short range, like it's basically almost a melee stun, it, it doesn't work out but if you combine him up with a Visage, he, then you can have that Grave Chill going off and the Grave Chill can set up for the Burrow Strike so I, I really like the combination. It has some very strong roaming potential as well. Maybe not that strong against a bat rider though, as bat riders overall are fairly decent in getting away over cliffs and all that sorts. As uh, yeah, bat rider picked up, and with the clockwork Moran already there. I mean, I was actually thinking on Morana mid, but this way I'm actually thinking bat rider mid, Morana safe lane, clockwork on the off lane, and bat rider against Templar assassin is doable. If you like, maybe last hit it wise, you can't harass her that much. You can harass her a bit but Refraction is still going to be strong. But the turn rate is going to be very annoying for the TA. As well as once Bat Rider actually tries to go for her and is fire flying, Firefly ticks off Refraction really fast. So that's a strong hero to have right there. And on top of that, you can create a lot of momentum with having that uh, lasso, of course, working for you. Now, they do kind of... Well, if, if they want to go for a very hard sword... Hard carry, which I, you know, you can. You, they're probably gonna run Marana as that kind of hero, but I'm not really that big of a fan of that. But they they are, have limited options right now in terms of their last hero. It's either secondary support or jungle hero. We still have the Chen in the pool, and that's something uh, that they Ten definitely do play. Remaining. I'm not just not so Five convinced if that's the right remaining. choice here. They can gank Templar Assassin with that, I guess. Templar Assassin is susceptible to ganks, maybe not as much as some other heroes due to the refraction. But if you have a way to tick off the refraction, and if you bring detection, she should be a decent kill. Bonus time being used for full assassins, as the Naga Siren got removed by Relax. Don't want to have to deal with that one, like, which is... <laughs> which carry do you really not want to face later on in the game? Naga Siren, okay, fair enough. Uh, they need uh, they need a core hero still though for their own ones, and they actually are the ones to ban out the lion themselves. Oh, wow! Oh! Is this a Marana Grom? I mentioned it during the first game that I hope that I was hoping and that that it never happens that Marana is a roamer, but that could be a, the case. It could also be a Sven support, as we do have Morphling uh, picked up. Oh, it's Dread Sven. Uh, sorry, I sound a bit disappointed by that because, uh, but it doesn't mean that Sven is a support in this case. I like it though because he is a support that can transition really easily into something more. Well, we're gonna see how these two teams uh, will tr th treat each other, as uh, we did get done with the draft, and we're gonna jump ourselves into the game. For so, is this is the second game 
of the best of three. You're watching the Yardwide Festival. And Vool Assassins are game down after being tremendously ahead for most of game one. And actually being ahead until the last five minutes. Five seconds remaining. And then they kind of threw. But if you didn't watch that game, you probably should watch it. Maybe not. Because I just told you the ending. Oh no, I didn't. Yes, I did. Uh, but anyway, so let's take a look. Sorry, slightly distracted there. Sidetracked there, rather. As uh, we have got Vool on the dire side for this game. We've got Wagamama on his Templar Assassin. Armen playing the Sand King. Blue Banana farming up on the Morphling Levkin. We'll be playing the Nature's Prophet. And that will leave Durham playing the Visage. So that is uh, gonna be Vool's lineup for the second game, the lineup that they're gonna try to force out a third game with. On the Radiant side we've got Relax, you're doing fine. And Dread will play a support Sven with the guy that was playing Slaughter previous game, so the, the hard carry Marana played by Fuck Off. Tiger in Space, otherwise known as Shaklo. Shaklo. Shashlu, I can't pronounce that properly. But uh, he's playing the Clockwork. And uh, Carp, the one that you saw play solo mid Marana previous game, will play the Bat Rider this game. That means that Crystal Maiden, last hero still to be picked up, will play it by Dan's in Trans. And there is indeed one man AFK. And the Crystal Maiden is the one. So the thing is, the thing that I really like about the lineup of Relax right now is that all three core laners, mid lane, top lane, butt lane, have the potential to just solo lane. We know them as potential solo laners as well. That leaves Dread and Crystal Maiden to be very open for roaming, very open for getting some kills mid with a TA. Now, I already mentioned that Flames will, of course, take off the refraction, so if they can get something going there, that would be, of course, uh, it would almost be a guaranteed kill if they bring detection around. And even if they don't bring detection, there's enough AoE damage for them to go around to just put on the floor and make sure that TA dies. So yes, this is very decent. Um, the hell? Look at it. It's like a smiley facey. He's laughing. He's happy. I like the rest. The rest is okay though. But it's it's a funny helmet. He's happy. Doesn't fit Sven that much. Being so happy, like a cat face, without a nose and whiskers. Oh well. Sorry, distracted. But um. But yeah, one thing that uh, they can also do is, uh, is get in, the, go into the jungle together, and go into and and turn just try to farm up a bit with uh. The Crystal Main with the first bite, of course. They can definitely farm some, get some levels up without taking levels away from the Marana. And I have to... Get this one going. Well, mouse stuck to the minimap. Ultra lag. Well, we have got another pause, so I guess it wasn't that bad that I got distracted there for a second again. Sorry, during the game it shouldn't happen again. Just so you are aware. But uh, but yeah, it's still it's still the case that there is going to be morphling farming, and the morphling should be having fairly decent free farm as well. There is a clockwork, of course, who will try to get some experience, but. It's just very scary. There is also, I mean, I talked about the, the Crystal Main Sven combination, uh, but there's also still a Sand King and a Visage who are also very scary. However, the one thing that I'm kind of lacking, seeing, uh, like not seeing for them, and the kind of thing that I was kind of expecting, is the smoke. No smokes. They do have boots on the Sand King, and that means roam. That means kills. But if there are some cleverly placed wards out there, then it's going to be very difficult for them to get in, in position. Uh, talking about the wards, the Crystal Maiden had both when I last checked, and she didn't give anything away. We also have Boots on the Sven, by the way. So the same kind of aggression. She actually did give a ward away. The visit on the Courier. No. What? Oh! <gasps> oh, what? This is normally, like, it's, okay, it's a big deal, but normally not this big of a deal if you have these very high roaming supports. If you have these immensely high roaming supports, you need to get those wards up. This is a big deal. And this is, of course, she tried to share the wards, but the person that she clicked on 
vanished, as in just walked away and then she clicked on the floor instead. That's how it goes. But it's, oh wow, I, I just, yeah, that's bad. That is really bad. That does mean that the mid lane is a lot more susceptible to ganks than it was before. And with the boots on the Sand King, even Pet Rider is not safe. I hope for him that he's going to go for some fast boots, but... I would actually expect, like, logic dictates that he would go for bottle first, rather than boots. Yeah, that's the better way to transfer it. <laughs> Just dropping them on the floor and then giving them to Dread instead. Let's see who uh, gets lucky with the rune. There's already a... Oh, I wonder. It's a. It's not really a treant though. It's just uh, some mold. The battle begins. Waiting for the rune. Let's see if the mold gets lucky. Mold does not get lucky. Double damage for the clockwork. It's a good one for him though. It's a good one for him indeed. At least uh, they can't really exchange blows now with him. And with they, I mean, both basically Sand King. But yeah, Visage will be rotating uh, back top. And he also like he has a Sentry Ward because he knows that if they are gonna try to get a, like if like. He picks up a sentry ward because he thought he was going to be able to counter ward one of the observers. Doesn't need to do that, of course, because one is in the base. He already placed one right here, which is, of course, counter towards a potential aggressive ward coming out from Dread, which he still doesn't have placed, so we'll see. He is actually going to place it, I think. Oh no, he's just going to land a stun. Arrow flies up on that as well, with the Treons not blocking it in time. This could be our first blood already, with the Crystal Man coming in for a right click and actually takes the last hit with the one Icy Blast. No, she got it with a Crystal Nova, but... That is going to be a first blood on the board and a very scary start for Vool already. Very scary indeed. Now the lucky thing is that Sven cannot do this very often now, but um, the thing is, yes, he's a very mana-starved hero with his stun, but Crystal Maiden, I wouldn't be surprised to see her specking her Crystal Aura or Arcane Aura at level 2 already, just to give Sven that extra regen to make sure that he is going to be able to land a stun whenever they need one. He only has one clarity as well. There's a couple of clarities on the Crystal Maiden, though. I would expect that she's going to use those on Dread when needed, as uh, they are pulling the wave needed, because, of course, that uh, kill did push the wave out in the end, giving Nature's Prophet some extra experience. In the meantime, the Clockwork, um, off lane wise he is one of those heroes that doesn't have an alternative to being on the off lane. He he can't really go into the jungle and he needs to be here for experience. And so far I have to say he's doing really well for himself, which is something that in my opinion should not happen because our men as well as uh, as the visage should be able to pull and stack and just make sure that there's not a single drop of experience going towards the the clockwork who they can also harass away from the lane a bit. But um so far yeah, he's doing okay. -ish. Two and a half. Templar Assassin with some rune control coming out here. 9 for 4 for Batrider. Waga is Templar Assassin sitting on 6 for 1. Difference in favor of Batrider, but not that big just yet. Anyways, we're still 2.5 minutes into the game, so anything can happen. And talking about anything can happen, Dread can happen. Dread sitting on the side lanes. And uh, with that Warcry extra armor, which got buffed, by the way, it's uh, pretty damn strong. Doesn't have a Crystal Mane to back him up, but... Yeah, actually, I would have liked that. He does have a, he does have a dust, so if there's going to be a meld then he knows to make sure that that's uh, not going to be an issue. Dread's making sure that he is not visible right now. Of course, that illusion rune did get noticed. Should get was was noticed. She did show him. He did show himself. So yeah, they just have to have to wait for the time to go. The refraction is on right now, and the question is: Is Waga noticing the maybe slightly more aggressive play? Wait a second. That's a kill right there. Visit Soul Assumption gets the last hit on the clockwork on the top lane, a c like a gank, a kill that. We could have seen coming a mile away. The slow was there, the burrow strike was there as well, and Clockwork can just stay alive against that. He did get back here very fast, of course, needed to get back here very fast because there was a wave pushing in and, and can't really afford to miss any experience as the last observer just got placed on the high ground right, right there. Good one, too. Making sure that you see the rotation coming in from supports if they try to go mid, and, and that rotation that Dread is now making is getting scouted out. Wild Guy's got five stacks of sticky napalm, though. Not anymore. Yeah, can't really go aggressive against Dread, or couldn't really there anyways. In the meantime, Crystal Mane still stacking and pulling, level 3 right now with their Arcane Aura. It's got one clarity left, which, yeah, will probably go the way of Dread. But I, like, Dread's waiting for the 4 minute rune. Oh, he's, he's gonna get lucky. This is, of course, scouted out. And they did see him run towards mid lane, so yeah, you see Waga back off. 
And this is uh, this is obvious, and he knows it now too. Like he knows that there is a word there for them. There's no other explanation for why I got to back off as far as he is. There's no explanation for why I got to come as close as he is. He has to be very careful. If he comes too close. Nah, he's not. Unless they're gonna dive? No, they're not. And that tower, tower, I believe, sees attack. Dread standing there. No. Yeah, they're gonna go for it. Their stun comes out, the dust as well. In comes a firefly, that means no more refraction. And who cares about towers? They're just gonna get this kill here. But in comes the burrow strike. Our man is gonna try to get a kill in return. The kill is there. Carp trying to run, won't be able to though. The tower finishing him off. And our man gets at least a return kill for Waga. But Waga wasn't there for the experience. Dread now though, he did get that experience. And he now gets the middle lane for himself as well, and is still higher life than the Sand King, who might be struggling slightly, who is also not going to move because he's getting some experience of his own. But a one for one trade here in the middle lane. A, a very ballsy one as well, like that dive past the tier one tower at that minute in knowing that, you know, you, you should be knowing like the support should have indeed teleports. This Mirana is doing really well, by the way. These face boots are working wonders. The harassment that you can deal with them is just so immense. Especially to this Nature Prophet, which only has one Tangle left after the last one he's after the one he's eating right now. It's almost gonna get forced into the jungle. Leaving Mirana to free farm. Mirana, who <laughs> should be free farming, kinda, uh, did of course get an assist and a kill, and therefore was a bit away from her last hitting rotation. But sitting on 26 to 7, compare that to the Morphling, who was... Uh, Basically not been forced into anything right now, he's just last inning, 32 for 6. Pretty small difference and, and yeah, pretty good for Mirana. However, later on in the game, the farm will mean more on Morphling than it does on Mirana. Mirana is still going to get squishy while Morphling, like carry-wise, Morphling would win it for Mirana. Let's just keep it at that. So I'm really hoping that this is not in Hand of Midas, Mirana, but just, you know, go for phase, go for drums, start fighting. Start going for things. Start getting those kills. Start getting those towers. My bat wants that. Talking about uh, getting kills. Batrider. A hero that with his level 6 can definitely start to make things happen. He, is got, he has got his lasso. But I think he's waiting for maybe the Sven to be there again. To get the stun off. He gets uh, an observer down. But wow, guys, safe. He's actually gonna try test for the rune or place a ward for the rune. Rune's not gonna be there. Still a minute to go. But the trap is na laid down. He's still he's still hanging around. Like I am, I'm not a uh, like I'm not against having a Sven support, but he is sacrificing a lot of his levels to just stand around mid. It's nighttime though, so Waga is not seeing him right now. Unless he goes towards the rune spot, but Waga is playing very safe. And still getting last hits. He's got face, he's sitting on 19 to 4. Carp sitting on 40 to 13 though. Difference? Tons and tons. 19, okay. But it's a big difference. It is. And yeah, there is a kill. But there is also a kill vice versa, so this is just outlast hit. It's a good pick. To pick, uh, pick a Batrider against a Templar Assassin. But I guess that's what you get if you expect the, the Mirana that gets picked up first to have the same role as the previous game. Mirana, of course, was mid-previous game and... That doesn't really matter for uh, Relax, they'll just put her on a different lane. Mirana against CA wouldn't be good for Mirana, so... Yeah, good choices to rotate them around. Question is, will Batrider be doing enough in the, in the game as Dread has actually this time smoked up? So he still really wants to get the kill. Still really wants to make uh, make the stun happen. It's just can't get into position, and Waga's positioning is just superb. He's just keeping himself very like he's sacrificing a lot of last hits for it. Yeah, sure enough, but he is he is really making sure that oh there you they're gonna go. In comes the stun. The dust has already popped as well. The traps are still there. The lasso. Oh my god, he doesn't get the lasso off, and now they have to back off. In the meantime, Nature's Prophet does go down. On the bottom lane, Crystal Main making it happen together with the Marana, but they do not get Waga. The lasso was not there. We saw Carp already on its way back, but his lasso was not latched on, and therefore no kill going the way of Relax. 
We do have got the blink dagger done. 30 gold, but it's done. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Especially if it takes down this one as well. Giving uh, giving some extra experience to Dreadier in mid, which is good. Like I mentioned earlier that I like Sven as a support, also because he is one of those heroes that later on in the game can rotate into way more than just a support. Can be a bit of a semi-carry. Just get a get a BKB, get a Crystalis, you know, he's still gonna be strong, you're still gonna do tons of damage if you get lucky. Dyer's bottom tower is Blink dagger by the way up for the Sand King. Now this is big. This is very big. He's gonna go for it. Epicenter being channeled. Blink Barrel Strike up on two. It's gonna be one and two, both dead. Nature's Prophet with one kill. Sand King with the other, but brilliantly done. And that is a surprise Blink Dagger for you. A very fast one for a support Sand King, I have to say. He's only got 24 last hits, but he's been involved in all the kills so far. And he's just been, uh, been saving up everything he has. And that does mean that, oh. Shaklo might be in some trouble here. There's not going to be a sprout or anything like that up for him. As actually the Blink Dagger also done for the uh, Batrider. And he shows it off by taking down the Nature's Prophet. Defending his tier 1 tower. Next time. Blue Banana as well as Durham having to back off again. So both teams making good use of their surprise Blink Daggers. From this point onward, though, they'll expect it, they'll know it, and they'll be taking it into account when they uh, think about their positioning again, as we do have a Morphling reforming out of the cogs. Just gonna be some harassment, though, nothing more than that. They're just continuing with their offlane. The uh, Clockwork is sitting on level 8, so he has got his hookshot. Now, I do believe that it's up to Relax to be the first one to make the real move, because their late game is not as strong as Fools. Fools have got a Nature's Prophet. And the Morphling, so their, la their late game potential is very strong, as Dread actually is going to go for this one. There is no way Waga is getting out of this one alive. They have detection, she can't have refraction because of the fire. In comes the Burrow Strike still, and Dread actually will go down from that, but the Freezing Field comes out from the Crystal Maiden, standing inside that... Oh, wow, he will still go down inside the Sandstorm. It does pick up the Sand King, but goes down to Durham after. Durham, who will go down as well to the Clockwork. Clockwork, who is in some trouble of his own, will be able to pick up the Nature's Prophet with a Flare. And actually, it looks like he'll run away alive. Moran, of course, there to back him up. Four dead on the side of Vool. Well, there were uh, three dead on the side of Relax. Do you think that Sven uh, did go down there as... Uh no, they can't get that last hit in. 100 gold going the way of uh, the Marana coming into play as well. 8-7. to seven, And um, I was just about to say, like, it should be relaxed. That is the more aggressive one. And they prove it. They get themselves uh, the fight. The only one that wasn't involved was Morphling, of course, who's happily farming top. So relaxed. They've got two routes to do this game. Either they... Either they're gonna go for shutting down Morphling, killing him over and over again and pushing the lane in every time where he is farming. So basically making sure that he is not gonna get big at any point and getting bigger in, uh, in return themselves. Or trying to fight and, um, oh, the new banana. He's not gonna be able to get the backup that he was hoping for and that is an illusion. Well... I think that's a pretty, uh, oh, Sand King, what you doing there, buddy? Hookshot gets him in there as well. Inside the uh, cogs, does get himself out again. As the Sprout comes out to make sure Clockwork is not harassing someone. Still the Moonlight Shadow, keeping them safe, safe for a little while. Moonlight Shadow has now ended, though. And no lasso, Blink, Epicenter again, up on two. Weaveform as well, that's gonna be two down. Clockwork and Marana just dropped just like that. It's gonna be one more soon because Crystal Maiden, is she gonna be able to live through this? Is she fast enough? Normally she would not be, but it looks like this time she is. Exception to the rule. Tower will not get the knight. Will ta be taken by the Templar Assassin. Templar Assassin with stick six stacks of sticky napalm. Seven now. This is a very sad Templar Assassin. However, she has got a lot of people backing her up and that should be enough to keep her safe, especially with Batrider trying to fly away. They do see him and then uh, he can't fly off the map anymore. So that's the wall right there. But it's enough to blink himself away. And he gets himself out in one piece. But that was uh, Vool once again. A blink dagger Sand King making uh, the place, doing the works, pulling his team forward and giving that blue banana that space that he so needs, so wants to get himself some extra farm. Look at the difference in net worth between him and the Marana right now. I mean, it's 2k difference. And yes, I did mention, Marana is a lesser late game carry, more of a now carry. But 
you know, you do need to get some farm and you do need to fight more than like farm heroes then. But no, can't do that either. Templar assassin with an invis rune. Let's see if she can take down Marana. Marana considered a glass cannon. There is backup as well. Sand King is around. Gets the Burrow Strike off. Melt hit coming out as well. Hookshot coming in. Nice leap away. The trap will still provide some vision. Perhaps it's enough. But it doesn't look like it. The Lasso coming out upon Waga as well. No more refraction as the fire is there. The <laughs> Frost uh, Freezing Field of Crystal Maiden already interrupted by the Sand King. You can't stand in fire like that, Sand King. Our man drops. It will be the Nature's Prophet getting uh, dropped as well. There is still a soul assumption coming out for Durham. If he just finds a good target, could be that he goes for the Waga, for the, sorry, for the uh, clockwork. But it's the visit that's already dead. Waga himself now still dusted up and he will get picked off here. One more disabled leader, or one more slow actually. He is able to slow his entire team. There comes the stun. That's going to give the kill and another four heroes dead on the side of Vool. With again, Morphling the one to survive. Because he was out in time, he wasn't there. He does finish up his Lincoln about ish though, needs just one more part for the secret shop. Another good fight for Relax. They take a tier 1 tower off the back of that as well, on the, on the bottom lane. And that was, that was, uh, well, almost Marana, dead. Good leap though, and good, of course, hookshot coming in. Basically clockwork saving the day. That Those cogs are just such a big... A big uh, deal of uh, in disrupting a team fight like that. I mean, Vu has got a good team fight, but if they get caught out, like they need, like Vu, if they want to win a team fight, they need to be the one to position themselves. They need to be the one to initiate. They need to have, of course, that set epicenter burrow strike blink combination. But if they are already in a position for something else and they're getting caught off guard, well, that's that's trouble for them, and they've proven that two times in a row now. As an arrow, we'll try to catch out Waga, but Waga is able to dodge it. Dread is uh, holding on to a stun though, but has to be careful because our man and Durham are behind the tower as well. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. Uh, have to be very careful here. Is under attack. You don't want to allow that Sand King to uh, to get you caught out again. Dread just really wants to get the tower. He's able to get it as well. In comes the fight though. The last two already up on Waga. Looks like Bad Rider will be able to make it out alive even with the Soul Sunshine coming out from Durham. Leap forward is going to be the Nature's Prophet that they're going to get first. The Burst Strike Epicenter still comes out. Bad Rider still caught out there. And the Sven goes down in the process to the Morphling who actually decided to come and help his team fight. It is a two for one exchange in favor of Vool this time. However, they do lose their tower. They do li make Morphling leave the lane. Even Yeah, he gets a kill. It's nice and all that. But he is now not farming. And they don't deny their tower, so it's not all bad for Relax, but oh, yeah, still I guess still in favor. I would still call it in favor of Vool, but well, still losing a lot of time on blue banana farming. That's just a shame. He's going for Yasha first. He's making his way top again. I mean, why not? Four staff now ready on the Bat Rider, so he's gonna be mighty fast. Something that he could have used last time, of course, because. Like, the moment that he grabs someone, he gets so much slowed or burrow striked, and he just needs to get away faster, and a 4 stuff will really help him with that. In the meantime, Dread has been giving a lane, and that means that we're going to see a lot more from this support Sven. It means we're going to see uh, perhaps BKB or Crystalis next item, but he is no longer going to be the person to ward. That is just up to the Crystal Maiden. Therefore, a lot of pressure on her, because she is, she's been playing a pretty big role as well. I mean, the Disable is, of course, a brilliant setup for that, uh, for the arrow. And her freezing field that she's been getting off a couple of times. Whoa, smokes. Durham and our man. The smoke is going to get ticked off. So they know that he is around there somewhere. They see him. Blink forward, Burrow Strike. And that's going to be a one dead Bed Rider, probably. One more hit. No, he's getting away for the moment. Flying to the high ground. It is going to be the Clockwork that saved his life, though. Clockwork, who's not going to be able to pick up the Sand King. Even though he did try valiantly. Clockwork will give his life for the Bat Rider in that case though. Smoke gank failed for Vool, but at least they get a kill off the back of it. But losing a clockwork at this point. Ah, it's also bad. I'm like if you're if you're talking about the lesser of evens, it, evils, it probably is indeed the 
the one, but it's uh, still not really all that good as uh, we will see Blue Banana maybe in some trouble. There is a lasso if they want to. Waiting for that uh, Linkus to take off first though. And a freezing field is what he's getting dragged into, but he'll just weave form himself out and he's morphing into strength. He is now, however, out of mana. And then Arrow comes in as well. Blue Banana, he'll actually drop here. That is a brilliant kill going the way of Relax. Very high priority kill. Very important kill indeed as uh, they actually are now the kings of the gold graph again by by by, well, by 1k <laughs> i mean it's it's a small difference fair enough but experience graph going in their way as well it's just jumping back and forth the whole time and and, and that's actually trouble because I would actually, like I already said, I thought that Relax was going to have the better early game, but late game they have to worry. Nice cogs! Kalakrog, Shakalog's making it happen, getting a cog in on two, realizes he is in with two, so he's kind of outnumbered, so he's in trouble. But he walks himself out alive, but the hookshot was brilliant. Just a shame that his team wasn't there to follow up in time. As Waga will go back to base completely out of mana, and fighting without refraction, not an option. Are men making a veil? I do like that. I like that more than an uh, Aghanims, actually. Uh, veil is... Oh, wait a second. That's gonna be an arrow. Sand King. You're dead, dude. You're dead, buddy. You're not gonna be able to go anywhere anymore. <laughs> Nicely uh, orchestrated there. And yes, uh, you saw that correctly. That is a blinking Sven. He got up to the high ground, got the Sven, stun or got the Sand King, stunned the Sand King. That is a blinking Sven, so I was thinking he's getting some farm to turn into more of a carry. But in fact, he was getting some farm to getting his blink deck already. I do like I do like it. It's a it's a good initiation tool that does not re only rely on the clockwork. Or you have a way to jump after your clockwork real fast. I mean, their lineup is so mobile. I mean Crystal Maiden is kind of the exception to the rule. But you've got a blinking Sven, you've got a leaping Marana with face boots, you've got a hookshot and clockwork, and you've got a four staff blink dagger batrider. They can be at your side in no time. And that's not a good thing if you're on the side of Vool. Radiance middle tower is under Looks like Vool is gonna try to take out the last tier one tower on the side of Relax. And is gonna succeed at it as well. Same thing is happening on the side of uh, Vool themselves, though. Their own Dyer's last tier one tower getting pressured here on the top lane. Our man has picked up himself a gem. Has to be very careful. He can't afford to give that away. Actually, no, that wasn't him. Batrider has given himself a gem. Blink. Last so Oh, Burrow Strike during the four staff. Still, he's safe. Hooks up coming in as well. Waga is, his, is their target, and Waga is also the prize they get. In the meantime, Dread was already able to help take down the Nature's Prophet. They're looking for more Blue Banana, realizing he shouldn't be here anymore, especially not after his Visage gets picked up, and he's on the run, together with the Sand King. Sand King can blink again, we'll make sure he does so, and they should be out of there alive, as uh, we are going to see, actually, the Weave form into Replica back. Just to make sure that Morphling is back to farm on the top lane to the lane and uh, the wave that's incoming. So yeah, that's a that is indeed a gem of truth set on the bat rider. I was confused there for a bit, but a very important one because I was gonna say like you pick up the gem if you're on Vool, you pick up the gem for the counter warding and for the moonlight shadow. But the gem on the side of Relax might actually be more important because the Templar Assassin and the Sand King sometimes rely on their meld and on their on their sandstorm to, to not to hide because you know at this level of gaming you do expect that they are carrying detection somewhat or then that they are going to be able to push you out of your place and or stun you or anything like that but most importantly you're using it to dodge things you can't do that if you're constantly visible because of the gem of the bat rider so yeah I, I like the pickup for relax a lot actually as they are looking to be a bit more aggressive here in the, the middle lane they are Spiking up in terms of gold, spiking up in terms of experience a lot more than in gold, of course. They got some kills on some very high leveled heroes. Three for zero, of course, that middle lane exchange was. If we could even call it an exchange, if it was just th three versus no one. So, just taking names, kicking ass. And taking over the dire jungle, apparently, is part of their plan as well. They'll find only a illusion. Yeah. And it's up. Was the morphling illusion, so they do seem more tanky? But it is, uh, yeah, it was a morphling illusion, and that's why it maybe you know you use more things on it. But fair enough, it's not that big of a deal. 
Especially not with the Crystal Main Aura maxed out. No need to worry that much about using your mana. And there was no ult used. As uh, the tier one, tier two bottom is having a lot of pressure here. Our men, Levkun, Waga, all trying their uh, their best to push it down a bit. It's already down to half health. Blue banana now with the Yasha in his inventory. Of course, we already saw his Lincolns. I like that he's not going for the shotgun because he just has to build for a later game, and there's not that many people that he can blow up. Marana and Crystal Main would be one of them, but for example, you can you cannot even blow up the support spin, right? Now this game can still so go either way. A lot more, like this is a lot more even game than the previous game was. And already previous games we saw, uh, oh he blinked, where did he blink towards? Did he double tap? I think he double tapped. I, I really thought he was going to go for that, but he double tapped then I think, or at least not blinked into, uh, into a stun. He's going to, oh, blinks into the next stun. There goes the dust. Burrow Strike doesn't dodge that stun though. Dread, without a stun, cannot take down our man fast enough, but he does force him away. It's something. I like his efforts. Use the dust for it though. I mean, uh, that's maybe kind of too much, but nonetheless, make sure that Sand King is no longer a menace on the bottom lane. Looks like both teams are kind of okay with trying to farm for the moment. Both teams, again, in the same situation. Where they don't want to take a 5 on 5 team fight because they wouldn't be sure if they can actually win. You know, and it sounds really stupid, but if you if you don't know if you're going to win, you don't want to fight. It sounds stupidly logical, doesn't it? It's because I am Captain Obvious. Burrow Strike misses. Misses the clockwork barely though, but yeah, that's why we see people playing passive. The next fight, what could happen is, of course, uh, Roshan attempt. Oh, nice, uh, nice catch there on Nature's Prophet. But uh, Roshan would allow a team to go for a team fight because they would have a fail safe. So I'm thinking that's an important thing to uh, to watch out for. And right now, with the gem up on the Bat Rider, who is of course a brilliant hero to try and counter ward things because he can fly on any cliff, etc. Hook shot, arrow does not hit. It's going to be a bit of a tricky thing here for the Clockwork, though, as Maga has turned on his BKB, is getting the kill as well, especially with the hope of Nature's Prophet. Burrow Strike, Epicenter, up on the Marana, who cannot leap away anymore. That initiation came from Relax. They paid for it. They're going to maybe lose another one here, but Bat Rider can get himself out from the other side of the cliff. And that means Roshan for Vul. They cannot defend it without the Clockwork, nor without the Marana, so that's it. At least they deny a tower, I guess that's something. But that's a, that's a big loss for Vool. They kind of have to now play passive for the next six minutes until the Aegis is, uh, is gone again. Now saying that, I do realize that that is the expected course. And it wouldn't be the first time that we see a smoke from a team that is uh, had just been taken an Aegis against. Purely to do something that wasn't expected. I mean, right now, if you're a fool, would you expect to relax to try and get a kill on you, even if you, even if you have the Aegis? No. And that's why it could be so strong. For now, though, it seems like they just want to farm, hold on to their towers and farm up. It's very dangerous to be uh, in a farming battle with a Morphling, however. 3,200 gold up on Dread. Curious to see what he's going to go for. Most likely BKB. Just to make sure the burrow strikes don't hurt him anymore and he can just start hitting people and lift them, right? BKB is already up for Marana as well. It's, it's just a very important item to have. Morphling, for now, is not such a right-click beast just yet, but he will be. For now, though, it's more important to do dodge the spells. As, of course, Templars has an also a right-click monster. Later on, you'll try to fight uh, against those. Maybe Heaven's Halberd wouldn't be bad for uh, for Sven, because Heaven's Halberding the Templar Assassin is pretty pretty damn good. And this Templar Assassin, her BKB is down to 9 seconds. Now, of course, there's still a couple of more charges to go before it, it's uh, it's real low. But if you can... Crystal Maiden. You're dead, dude. Yeah, there's really no way you're going to get out of there alive. Nice attempt, though. But, yeah, if, if you're going to be... Up against Templar, Assassin, and Morphling. Being able to disarm one of them is very big. So I wouldn't be surprised to see him go for that instead. But BKB is indeed the first item. So we'll see if the 
Really? Batrider? What were you doing still there? I really thought he was gonna get away. He teleported in? Your teammate just died there. That was the most obvious one ever. What are you doing there too? Clockwork, what are you doing? Leave. You can't leave anymore. You're dead. That's a triple kill. Now we have seen previous game what a throw looks like, but this is coming quite close to that, to be honest. Or are they trying to create space for the Marana? No, I don't think so. No space was created. No. It's a shame, really. Like... No. Just no. Just no. Nonetheless, um... Fool's uh, happy with that. Especially since they now also got the gem, as you see, Blue Banana is the one to have it. There is a new gem just picked up, though. Batrider realizes he does need that. But his own wards are going to be a lot less effective from now on. However, like I guess, you know, the Morphling is normally by himself, and he is not really a hero that normally tries to check for all the wards and stuff. So I guess he is the, um, one of the heroes that Relax doesn't really mind having a gem upon. Meaning, you can still be placing wards quite safely on high ground, high grounds and stuff, and don't expect them to be counter warded straight away. The gold graph is going back to full, by the way. Of course, as uh, their last couple of fights, last couple of kills have been going their way. Experience graph back to zero as well. It's just an interesting game, back and forth, back and forth game. Between Vu and Relax, same one as previous game, of course. It's game two of the winner's bracket. Of a winner's bracket game. Winner's bracket semi quarterfinals, I believe. Winner's bracket quarterfinals. With one game in favor of Relax. And of course, Vu that looked to force out a third game. Uh, Relax was doing okay for the first part of the game. But are starting to drop off a bit again. They have to just keep their, keep their game under control. They don't have to deal uh, with an Aegis again soon anymore. I mean, it will disappear in about a minute and a half or a minute or so. Where is that? There it is. Morphling still has it. He's also going for a butterfly. So MKBs are needed. Oh, they're looking for him. Careful, though. Careful, though. There's, of course, an Aegis Prophet that can be there at any point when he wants to. Especially since he was very close by as well. And Morphling is just such a difficult hero to take down as well. Go Scepter up for Nature's Prophet. I haven't really talked that much about Nature's Prophet. It's because his split pushing cannot be that effective with so much mobility on the side of Relax. It's just a lot more scary, the split push, than it normally would be. So... You don't see him that much. But he is definitely going to be a very strong factor soon, especially once he has a Scythe of Ice ready. He already has the Shadow Blade to try and keep himself up for uh, a little while longer if he is going to go for uh, some split pushing. But yes, he will be very scary. And I'm actually thinking, like, the natural MKB carrier, the only one that I can think of here on the side of Relax, would be the Marana. And you kind of do need an MKB with a butterfly being up soon, a Morphling as well. And it's, it's, he's far off. He is very far off. Marana, of course, I mean, she's sitting on, four, on 600 gold. She has just finished up her Manta style, but an MKB is really needed. At some point, you need to be able to kill off that Morphling. Wow. Morphling immediately going into his replicate when that arrow flew in. And now he does have a shotgun ready. I talked about this earlier that I didn't really like it, but it's a, it's a third item. So in this case, I like it again. Because he has his Manta style, he already has some extra tech speed and damage. He's doing okay in that regard. And, and this is basically a lux luxury item, because Mirana is still a bit of a glass cannon. She n will now get forced to turn over BKB purely for the Morphling. If ne even if they meet one versus one. Playing glass. So our men might just get caught out here. In comes a stun. He should be dead. Indeed he is. Nice pick off. Very good pick off for Relax. It's just a Sand King, but it is a hero that will make sure that Vu doesn't have to worry about the Burrow Strike epicenter combination. They can actually maybe try to make something happen now, especially since they know that Roshan is not up, or at least that the Aegis is, is disappeared. And that they don't have to really... Like, if they lose a fight right now, they wouldn't have to give up the Roshan for it. Because Roshan is not up yet for a while. 
So they can actually try to make something happen here without being too worried about losing too much if they indeed lose the fight. So they're gonna try to go for Vaga here. Let's see if we can get a hookshot. No, we cannot. They're still cooldown. So they just go for the tower instead. There is God Strength on Sven as well. Seems to be going for an AC after his BKB. The aura for assembling. Lasso catches himself, Vaga. Can he do it? Yes, he can. Quick, easy kill. Morphling Illusions, Ethereal Blade, can he get a kill? No, he has to morph himself back into his Illusions. In comes the sun up on Waga, who is back again. A Dread gets picked off there. Morphling with the right clicks is just hurting, with his, even with his Illusions. But of course, Familiar Bird is doing a big job there as well. We don't have a Leap anymore. We do have a Moonlight Shadow if Marana wants to use it. My, she has a leap again, so she'll be okay. Bat Rider still gets picked up by the Morphling. Bat Rider stuck around on the top lane for a little while too long as an epicenter gets ca casted. Just for the clockwork. The gem drops as well. That is the second gem to drop on the side of Relax, giving it to Vool, who can uh, put it with their collection in the base. But that is uh, very scary. Morphling, or uh, sorry, Bat Rider died on the top there. This is This could actually be Vool's game right now, right here. Especially if Relax is gonna have their Mirana and Crystal Maiden picked up. They do try to counter push a bit, but with just a Crystal Maiden, you're not gonna get very far. Radiance top tower is under attack. And this might just be Radiance their their game with this push. Morphling, pretty big. In comes an arrow. Mirana is the one to cut to Yeah, you're dead. Mirana and Crystal Maiden, the two heroes that I mentioned that would drop from the shotgun. And uh, with Mirana on the sidelines. Is there enough damage to force them away? Luckily, there's still a tier 2 tower standing on the side of Vool in the middle lane. But I wouldn't be surprised if they rotate bottom instead. And, I mean, why not? The lane is pushing in as well. They are getting a Crystal Maiden here in the mid lane as the burst stopped her from casting Freezing Field. Run, Crystal Maiden, run! Never mind, you're dead. Owen is being called as well. In the meantime, Batrider is back in and looking for Blue Banana, who tries to weave form away. He gets stunned there as well, still morphing into strength, but the strength of... Relax is too much. Did they get the gem off the back of it as well? I think so. I think they got one back. Batrider. Yeah, Batrider has it again. So that's good for him. So they only lose one lane of Rax in the end. And they get a Morphling kill and perhaps they get a Roshan off the back of it one minute without Morphling. I think they might be able to. I think they should be able to better yet. Or at least force out a buyback which he does not does have. He does have it. Yeah. They are needing to push into their like base though because... There is a big creep wave in the base. But for now, that will be Crystal Mane's job once she respawns. Moonlight Shadow. Roshan didn't really go down fast, so they decided to change uh, tactics. Can they find a pick off? Waga with the double damage room playing very safe. Positioning himself very safe as well. Sand King actually. His blink dagger is of course there. The wombo combo that he can make happen in the Roche pit is of course pretty terrifying. And Relax is aware of that. And with Morphling coming back alive, they're not gonna go on it. No. I really thought they could have. Maybe their damage is not high enough just yet. And now it, w it will be fools. Unless Relax can, can start up a big fight off the back of this one, but with everybody alive... No yeah, no. It's not gonna happen. Morphling with the ages. And Relax, they have to play very defensive right now. I say that. Yes, I do see this guy right. I'm blinking forward, grabbing Waga. Is this the right call, though? Everybody a fool is around here. Arrows getting dodged by BKBs. We're gonna have an Ethereal Blade up on the Crystal Main, who will get almost picked up from that. One more hit needed. He does get away. 28 health. No problem. Crystal Main lives. It is gonna be the Clockwork that is the one to die, but the Lasso not doing anything at all. And they're still a 1 for 0 trade in favor of Vool. They almost get the Crystal Maiden, of course, as well. In comes the Veil. However, the epicenter is... Well, I, I guess he's still there. But Veil, well... Let's see if they're gonna go for it. The la they know the Lasso is down. They know the Moonlight Shadow is down for a little while longer. Actually, only 6 seconds. Burst Strike doesn't hit anything. They'll just go for the tower, though. Batrider is sitting on the side and is ready for a Lasso again in 5 seconds. 
But we have to wait for their team speak to be back up again as they have had a lot of issues with their voice communication today. I'd say just don't use team speak, but you know. Apparently that is not an option. Not an option indeed. Oops, sorry for sounds. I actually think that fool with this push. If they don't make any mistakes, they should be able to get this. I mean, they still have an Aegis. One zero zero one. Well, at least he gets that. Oh, you can see that in showcase mode? I didn't know you could. Because you can't see that normally. If, like, if you click your enemies, you know what level they are. But you don't know the rest. But apparently with showcase mode, you can. That's actually pretty damn bad. Well, we're having a go again. Let's see if, uh, if Wu can finish this and force out a third game. Which I would actually like to see. So I wouldn't be against it. Ethereal Blade, Marana turns on her BKB. We'll live through it, but we'll be forced back. Lasso grabs her himself Waga, but there's no follow-up, no damage. Dread on a total different side of the fight as well. Everybody on a different side of the fight. They turn out to go on Waga. They do get him in the end, but their tower drops, and the Aegis is still in the hand of Lubanana. I wouldn't be surprised if they turn and burn. No, they back off. Losing Waga apparently is their, uh, their no-go signal, so they're going to be uh, dealing with that one. Where do they go? No, they're gonna let it go. Can't really turn and burn. And it's off. Not without Waga. Well, that's an illusion. Well, they're giving they're giving it another chance. They're giving a relax another chance. And for them, I like I like it. I'm not sure if they if it's enough though. They have an AC now, which is very important, of course, if you are going to be up against someone like. A temporal assassin that does have that melt damage, and I mean, at some point, I'm gonna assume that death Pro or nature's prophet or temple assassin or anybody picks up a deadless as well. So you're gonna need that extra armor. But the thing is, like, where is their damage gonna come from? Because right now it's Marana, Sven, and Batrider. Clockwork is a bit of a non-factor in terms of damage. He has a lot of control, yes, but it's damage that they want. And there is a man style and a BKB on Marana, which is very defensive. Sven supports Sven is going for also defensive. There's an AC and a BKB for him as well. I guess Blink cannot be seen really as, uh, as defensive, but not really giving him extra damage. And Batrider is not really the one to be doing the damage. So they really need to get all... Wow. Bye, Marana. Uh, all plays going their way and make sure that there's no BKBs uh, throwing salt in their food or something, if that is the same saying. But... Yeah, this is, uh, this is a tricky situation. They grab Blue Banana, though. He still has an Aegis, and he is morphing into strength as well, so he might not even die from his, uh, this indeed. Dread now goes up on Waga, only is able to take off the Refraction, and then is already forced back out. Melt damage coming in as well, and four staff into the base. The Rax, in the meantime, will drop Blue Banana. He is doing just fine, and he will be losing his Aegis gladly to get back on full health. They get the Batrider in the end. And they get the racks as well. Can rotate to bottom lane if they want to. But it's not needed anymore because relax. They call it. They see it as it is. They call the GG. And they will go to a third game. To see who is the true champion of this winner's bracket quarterfinals. You are of course watching the White Yard Festival. But uh, yeah I have to say I thought relax was having it. At some point I thought they did. But then they just let go of the pressure. And then all of a sudden... It's yeah, like you're too defensive, not aggressive enough anymore. If they kept on, on the aggression, I feel like they had a chance, but not this way. We're going to see ourselves a third game, so stick around for Relax vs. Vool. You're watching the Yard Wide Festival, and we'll be right back.